video I'm going to show you how to save a shared whiteboard in a Zoom breakout room so that you can then take that whiteboard back to the main Zoom room to share with everybody. So this is almost recreating what we do in the classroom where participants bring the flip chart back to the main room and show it to everybody and each breakout room takes a turn in showing their uh, flip chart, in this case a shared whiteboard. So in this case I'm already in Zoom, I've been put into my breakout room, you can see that here, I'm in breakout room one um, in Zoom and I'm just about to open up a shared whiteboard. So this is as if the participants have just gone into the shared uh, into the breakout room and they're about to start gathering thoughts onto a shared whiteboard. So I click on share screen and then whiteboard. Um, now in my case I created one earlier and stayed within the same breakout room. So it's already got this on there to save time. In real life whenever you go into a breakout room and click share screen and then choose whiteboard, it will always be blank. There is no way to pre-populate a whiteboard with headings for participants in a breakout room to use. So this, this isn't exactly real life, but if you imagine that a few moments ago, these people went into this breakout room, they opened a blank whiteboard and the, um, the lead person within the breakout room added in the titles, disadvantages, uh, advantages, drew a line down the middle, and then the squiggles are supposed to represent the information that we've gathered under each of these headings. So we've got three disadvantages from this breakout session and four advantages. We've now been given a warning by the uh, host facilitator that we're about to return back to the main room and that everybody should be ready to share uh, with everybody else their whiteboard screen. So here's what I need to do. I need to, within the annotate toolbar, which is already open because I'm in whiteboard, um, anybody within a breakout room who can bring up the annotate button, and that's all PC and Mac users, um, on, a, on an iPad you can annotate but you can't save. Um, so at least one person, more than one person is fine, should choose the save button here. And what it does, it saves a picture of that page to the local PC or Mac. Um, and as I say, anybody in the breakout room can do that. So if each participant who's on a Mac or a PC wants a copy, they can do that. Um, but certainly the lead facilitator needs to have one or whoever's going to present back in the main room. So we uh, bring up the annotate toolbar. It's already here. If not, it, you may need to go into the more button up here. Annotate toolbar, hit on save. Notice this thing comes up. It says whiteboard saved, show in finder. And then after a few seconds, that disappears. So this is a crucial point now that many people lose, is where the heck has my whiteboard file been saved to? That becomes a problem once you get back to the main room. If you now disappear out of this room into the main plenary session, um, you may not know where your whiteboard has been saved. So a couple of things here. First of all, when you hit save, and by the way, notice when you hit save, there's no choice over where to save it, what the file name is, it just saves it straight away. So it's already been saved. In fact, I've now saved two or three copies. Save Every time I hit save, it creates and saves a new copy in the same place. So my top tip here is always to encourage participants to hit save and then immediately hit this option, show in finder. Um, on a PC, that will be show in folder. So it brings up the folder on the local PC or Mac where that whiteboard file has been saved. And you can see here that where it actually goes to, it's within the documents folder, typically unless you've changed any of the settings. I don't know whether you can change the settings, but it always, as far as I'm aware, goes on your local machine to documents. There is a Zoom subfolder, and then every time you um, have a new meeting, whether you're a host or an attendee, it creates a new subfolder with the um, the date of the Zoom meeting, the time, and the title of the meeting. So if you have two, three, four, five Zoom meetings in a day, there'll be different folders for each of those meetings. In that folder get saved all of the um, saved whiteboards, anything with an annotation on whenever anybody hits the save button, it creates a PNG file within that, or a graphics file within that subfolder. This is also where any saved chats go. So if um, the host has enabled you to save the chats, when you save a chat, it goes here as well. So um, it's, in, it's in my folder. And then what I would also encourage participants, participants to do is open it up um, immediately. So if I double click on that, it brings up, let me just move that one out of the way. Um, it brings up within a relevant application that uh, graphics file. So on a Mac, the default application for opening PNG files is the preview application. So it's opened up 
that whiteboard within preview. And I would leave that on the screen so that when you go back to the main plenary session, it's already open, ready to share. So I've saved it. Um, if I now go back to the shared whiteboard, so this is now live within the Zoom breakout room, I can close that. Um, let's imagine that the host has called us back to the main plenary room. So let me just uh, imagine we're doing that. So we're going back to the main session now. So we're returning to the main session. Here we are in the main session, as it says here, and the lead facilitator is now saying, could each breakout room one by one share the results of their discussion uh, on their flip chart? So the way I now do that from breakout room one is I go to share screen. It shows me all open windows on my um, Mac in my case. So there's the one that I saved early and immediately opened. So if I click on that and do share, then it shares that. Um, again, if uh, a couple of things to note when you share, uh, want to share a screen, if the screen, if the application is minimized, so let me see if I can fudge that. So if I stop the share here, this is the file that I have successfully shared. If this happened to be minimized when I do share screen, it's not here. Um, so, you know, you have to have it open and not minimized for you to be able to share it. Um, of course, you can always you could share the the folder or the finder and then open up the file, but so much easier just to within the breakout room hit save and then immediately open it so it's ready to share. So that's the end of my tip for today. That's Zoom breakout rooms and how to save shared whiteboard files. The same, by the way, applies if you're sharing any kind of um, application within a breakout room. So within a breakout room, you can share any application, whether that's a word, word, um, a word file, whatever's open on the screen. People can annotate on top of that. So that's another way to do it. Would be to create um, a PowerPoint slide with the headings, advantage, disadvantages on. Send that to your participants in chat as a file, and then they open that within the breakout room and share it and then everybody can annotate on top of that. Again when you hit the save all it does is creates a graphic picture of that screen if you like. So it's exactly the same method whether it's a shared whiteboard or a shared file. Hope that's useful. Drop me a line if you need any help.